external ear includes two parts that is what we are able to see a kidney shape or eight figure of eight like structure that is a pinna or the auricle and a tube here called external auditory canal which leads into the tympanic membrane it is also called external auditory meatus today we are going to deal with the pinna and the parts of the pinna how to identify the parts see this pinna is made up of elastic cartilage elastic cartilage if you feel it is firm it is not exactly soft it is not hard also it is firm it is made up of elastic cartilage proof here if you pull and leave it is go back to its position the lower most part of the pinna has got a soft tissue it is a fibrofatty tissue it is called as a lobule so people utilize this even the ear piercing person knows this see he has pierced the ear in the lobule you can clearly see he has pierced the ear lobule because it is less painful because it is a soft tissue if you pierce anywhere here those who got pierced your ear or real they will realize what i am telling it is very painful because the, the skin over the pinna is tightly adherent to the underlying cartilage that is elastic cartilage the parts of this pinna includes it includes the following parts the outermost convex projection over here it's called as helix so this portion is the helix within the helix we have a depression here called scaphoid fossa it's like boat like fossa so we call it as scaphoid fossa within this convexity there is one more convex this smaller convexity this is called anti helix the upper end of the anti helix has got a y like splaying so within that there is one depression can you see that the triangular depression is called triangular fossa so here is the helix this is the anti helix this is a scaphoid fossa this is a triangular fossa this helix and anti helix if i pull it you can see it's attached to the side of the skull by the portion called as crux of the helix and crux of the anti helix whereas here we can see within the anti helix there is a depression it's called as a concha it leads to one more larger depression called simba concha which enters into which enters into simba concha enters into external auditory canal the lower most portion i already told you it's a soft tissue it's called the lobule of the pinna or the auricle covering the anterior surface of the external auditory canal there is a triangular projection backwards and that is called as tragus of the ear it protects the external auditory canal from anterior so that uh, no honey bee or anything hmm, any bee should not go and make nest in your external auditory canal so it's protected by a triangular projection backwards called the tragus opposite to the tragus from the anti helix there is one more projection you can see this tiny projection it's called the anti tragus this portion is anti tragus between the tragus and anti tragus there is a depression and that is called as intertragic notch and the lower most part of the pinna which is not made up of elastic cartilage instead it is made up of fibrofatty tissue it is called as a lobule of the pinna so the entire pinna is made up of elastic cartilage it is molded in such a way that it appears like the main function of this is localization of sound if i do like this the person is able to tell the sound is coming from upwards or downwards or backwards or forward because localization of the sound is most important for us so it appears like multiple dishes are there here the dish i'm talking is direct to home connection which is there on the rooftop of every building okay so this is facing forward okay you can see this this is facing downward okay this triangle of fossa and this crux of the helix this scaphoid fossa is facing forward okay this simba concha also forward okay this portion intertragic notch is facing upwards so it appears like uh, nature has provided multiple dishes which is concave large dish which is able to localize the sound waves towards the source of sound that is a main function also by head shadow effect the head is interfering between this pinna and the opposite pinna so head shadow effect also plays a major role in localization of sound in addition to this it appears like it's grabbing the sound waves sound waves mechanical energy so it is it is gathering the sound waves towards the external auditory canal that is also a major function of the pinna other than that cosmetic function you can see that wearing a jewelry hmm. these are the main functions of the pinna localization of sound waves gathering the sound waves towards the external auditory canal and the cosmetic function and differentiating the sound the source of sound so i hope you understood the pinna or the auricle in detail blood supply of this includes the anterior tympanic artery superficial temporal superficial temporal vessels posterior auricular vessel 
ओके ग्रेटर ऑरिकुलर नर लेसर ऑक्सीपिटल नर ऑरिकुलो टेम्पोरल नर सुपोशल टेम्पोरल नर ओके ऑल दीज नर्व इंक्लूडिंग द ऑरिकुलर ब्रांच ऑफ वेगस नर्व सप्लाइज द पिन्न सो दट इज अबउट द ब्लड सप्लाई एंड नर्व सप्लाई थैंक यू फॉर वाचिंग एंड लर्निंग फ्रॉम लॉजिक मेडिको लिंफेटिक ड्रेनेज इफ यू वॉन्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड द पिन्ना एंटीरियर आस्पेक्ट ड्रेन्स इंटू प्री ऑरिकुलर लिंफ नोट्स और द पेरेटेड लिंफ नोट्स द पोस्टीरियर आस्पेक्ट ऑफ द पिन्ना ड्रेन्स इंटू द पोस्ट ऑरिकुलर लिंफ नोट और द मैस्ट्रॉइड लिंफ नोट्स दट इज अबउट द लिंफेटिक ड्रेनेज थैंक यू फॉर वाचिंग एंड लर्निंग फ्रॉम लॉजिक मेडिको इफ यू न्यू टू अर चैनल कैंडली सब्सक्राइब टू अर चैनल डोंट फर्गे टू प्रेस द थम्सअप आईकॉन इफ यू गेन सम नॉलेज फ्रॉम दिस वीडियो थैंक यू वन अगेन शेयर विथ योर फ्रेंड्स टू